Hello everyone. In this lesson, we're going to learn about using dictionaries and sets in Python. Now in the previous lessons, we learned about some sequential data types, such as lists, tuples, and strings, which are ordered collections of objects. Now ordering can be useful in some cases, such as if your data is sorted or has some natural sense of ordering, but this ordering comes at a price. When you want to search through a sequence of objects like a list, your computer has to go through every element one at a time in order to find the object you're looking for. So consider the following code we have here. We're making a new list with 10 elements in it. And then we're going to say zero in my list. And of course, zero is not in my list, so the result of that is false. But notice that since zero doesn't exist here, the computer is having to look through every single item before it can tell us that zero isn't there. So that is uh, potentially a lot of wasted computation. Say if we had a list of a billion objects, we'd have to look through a billion things just to know that the, the object we want isn't in there. Dictionaries offer an alternative to this type of sequential lookup that allows you to look up items much more quickly at the cost of the dictionary not being ordered. Dictionaries are unordered collections of key value pairs that are implemented as a hash table under the hood. What that means is every index or key into a dictionary is passed through a complicated function that spits out a numerical value that indicates a place in memory to store the associated value. The implementation details of dictionaries and how hash tables work aren't of great concern to us at this point in the series. The most important thing to know is that when we want to look something up in a dictionary, instead of having to look through every item, we can instead take the key, pass it through the hash function, which will get us a value that directly looks up that object in the appropriate place in memory. So this allows us to look items up in a dictionary in what's known as a constant runtime, because the only thing we have to do to look it up is pass the key value to the hash function, and then we immediately get the value. So using dictionaries to store values that you're going to be looking up a lot can save a significant amount of processing time versus, say, storing those items in a list. To create a dictionary, you enclose the data you want to store within curly brackets instead of the braces like you would use for a list. And for every dictionary entry, you need both a key and a value. So first you put the key. So here, this key is going to be the string name. Then you put a colon. And after the colon, you put the associated value. So here we're saying when we use the key name, we want to get the value back, Joe. And then comma will store something else. When we use the key age, we want the value 10 and the key city will have an associated value of Paris. So when we run this, it will show us that we have indeed created a dictionary with three different key value pairs. Now that we've created a dictionary, we can look up objects by using the key as the indexer into the dictionary. So when we use lists, we put the list name, square brackets, and then the index within the square brackets to look up the item at that index. For a dictionary, we use the dictionary name. Again, we use square brackets, but instead of supplying a number that's the index, we supply whatever the value of the key is. In this case, name was a valid key in this dictionary, so when we run it, we get the name we stored, which is Joe. Now, it should be noted that the keys you use to make a dictionary, such as name here, have to be immutable objects. That means things like strings, integers, and tuples, which are immutable, will work as keys for a dictionary, but things like lists or other mutable objects you can't use as a key. You can, however, use mutable objects as the values you're storing. Now, after you have created a dictionary, you can add new items to it easily by using this syntax. You put the name of the dictionary in square brackets, the name of the new key you want to add, so just as if you're looking something up but you're going to look something up that is not stored yet. And then you say at that new key value equals whatever the new value you want to store is. So after running this, we have added this new value to the dictionary under the key of new key. So if we print the dictionary again, we'll see that that indeed has been added to our dictionary. You can delete existing key value pairs in a dictionary using del. So we'll type del for delete. 
then the name of the dictionary, and in square brackets, the key you want to delete. You can check the length of a dictionary with len, just like you can for a list. You can also check whether items exist in a dictionary with the in keyword. So here we can check, is name in my dict? And this is checking whether name is in the keys of my dict. And that, that is one of the keys, so that will return true. Note that since in is checking only the keys for the dictionary, if we passed one of the values in the dictionary here, it would say false. So if I said Paris in, in my dict, well, that is one of the values in there, but it is not one of the keys. So if I run that, it'll say it's false instead of true. So just know that if you check in dict, it's gonna check through the keys, not the values. If you are interested in looking at the values instead of the keys, you can do that with some functions. So we'll show how to do that. So to get the name of the keys, you can just put the name of the dictionary and then dot keys. And that will get you those. And if you need the values, the name of the dictionary dot values will get you that. So for instance, if we wanted to check if Paris was in the values, we could say Paris and then in and check if it's in the dot values and that would return true. And if you wanna get both the keys and the values in tuples, such as if you want to iterate through every key value pair, which is something you may want to do, you can use dict.items. So here we're getting back every key value pair in the dictionary as tuples. Now real world data often comes in the form of tables with rows and columns, where each column specifies a different data feature like name or age, and each row represents an individual record. And we can encode this sort of tabular data in a dictionary by assigning each column a key and then storing the data for that column as values in a list associated with that key. So consider this table here. We have a name column, an age column, and a city column, and just a few values for each. We could actually store this in a dictionary in Python like so. We'll create a new dictionary, set it equal to and then the names of the columns will be our keys. So we'll have name, age, and city. And then for the values after the colon, we'll just enclose in a list all the values for that column. This isn't a very big table, so there's only three values in each one. But this shows you how just with the dictionary, we're able to essentially encode this table and this is something that can be extended to tables of really any size. So say if you had a very large Excel table or something like that, this would be a way that you could store that data. We will learn about Pandas data frames in a future lesson, which is essentially a kind of nicer version of this sort of data storage with some more features. But with base Python, this is a way that you can store tabular data. It's also worth mentioning that certain common data formats such as XML and JSON have non-tabular nested structures and Python dictionaries can actually contain other dictionaries. So they're quite good at mirroring this sort of nested data structure, providing a convenient interface for working with these sorts of data formats in Python. We will cover more on loading data into Python in a future lesson, but just know that Dictionaries combined with various libraries Python has for working with data will let you work with pretty much any common data type you're likely to encounter. And now we will move on and learn about sets. So sets are unordered mutable collections of immutable objects that cannot contain duplicates. So sets in Python are analogous to sets in math, which is essentially just a list of objects, but it can't contain duplicates, so they're only unique values within the set. Sets are useful for storing and performing operations where each value has to be unique and doing mathematical set operations such as intersections and unions. To create a set, we use the curly braces just like a dictionary, and we supply a list, comma separated list of the items we want in the set. But in, unlike a dictionary, we do not have key value pairs. They're simply single items that we store in the list. You can add and remove items from a set with set.add and set.remove. So here, if we say my set.add8, it will add that value to the set. And if we say dot remove seven, it will remove the value seven. Now sets do not support indexing. So you can't, for instance, say my set and then put square brackets after and try to look up something at a given index because it does not have indices. 
but it does support some common sequence functions such as len, min, max, sum. You can also check membership and non-membership as usual using in. So we can check, for instance, is six in my set? And the result of that is true. But the main purpose of sets really is to make sure that your data object doesn't contain any duplicates and also to allow for performing set operations. So we'll show how to do some of those below. Here we're going to make two new sets and you can see that the sets have some values in common such as one and three, but also some values that aren't in common. Such as so to get the union of two sets, which is all of the items they have combined, you pass in the first set, then say dot union, and the second set as the argument to union. So if we run that, we get all of the items in both of the sets combined. And if there are any overlap, those we only get one back for each of those. And to check the intersection, which is the values they have in common, you pass the first set dot intersection, and then the second set as the argument. So as we said before, one and three are the values they have in common. So that would be the intersection. You can also check the difference between two sets. So that shows you which items they don't have in common. So here we're going to pass in one set, say dot difference, second set. And note that this will return the items in the first set, set one here, that are not in set two. So in this case, that's five and six. If we wanted to see the difference from the perspective of set two, so the items in set two that aren't in set one, we just have to switch these around. And if we ran that, we would get that result. You can also check whether one set is a subset of a different set. A subset just means all of the items the set contains are also in the other set. So here we're gonna say set one dot is subset. That's checking is set one a subset of set two. And since we know there are some items in set one that aren't in set two, that is gonna be false, it is not a subset. But if we change set one here to a different set that actually is a subset, such as this set right here, if we run that, that would actually be true. Now, one of the more useful things you can do with sets is to just get the unique elements of a list that you already have. So you can do that by converting a list to a set using the set function. So here we have a list called my list and it has various duplicates in it, like there's three twos and three fives. If we wanted to collapse this into a data structure that takes out all the duplicates, we can just do that by running the set function and passing the list into that. When we run that, the resulting set has removed all the duplicates. Now, if we wanted to, we could convert this back to a list again using list around the whole thing. So that is essentially a quick way of just stripping out any duplicates from a list, but still keeping it as a list at the end. Dictionaries are very useful general purpose data structures capable of encoding both tabular and non-tabular data. But as I alluded to earlier, the basic built-in structures in Python like dictionaries lack many of the conveniences we'd like when working with tabular data, such as the ability to generate summary statistics quickly for each column, transform the data quickly and easily, and generate plots, for instance. In the next two lessons, we'll look at data structures available in Python packages that are designed specifically for data analysis and data science namely NumPy arrays and pandas data frames. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.